Good morning. In fact, now I'm outside. I can whew, take my mask off and breathe just before we talk about the GT3. Represent. Are there any really early subscribers to the channel? Uh, I actually had an S1 Quattro on the channel. Uh, bright yellow black roof. Do you know now that GR Yaris has launched, uh, it's actually made me realize how great that thing was. Not many people know, but they had to re-engineer the entire uh, rear half of that car in order for an a A1 platform uh, to accommodate Quattro all-wheel drive, which is one of the reasons it was so expensive. But as a result, you could drop clutch in first in that thing and it would just squat and go. Damp weather, that was like the GR before the GR, so nice to see one of those about. Anyway, um, you might have noticed that we're kind of back vlogging. It's been a while. Uh, we've ultimately had an excuse uh, to book ourselves a hotel room for business. To behold the, uh, that's not it's not quite the first hotel room I expected to be in after not traveling for 18 months. But uh, today we've got some really exciting progress uh, with regards to a new car joining the channel and sunglasses update. Finally, uh, I was working out that I may have dropped the whole concept of the sunglasses a little bit early, uh, which transpired to be about 18 months ago now. I can't believe it's been that long. We'll explain to you why it's taken so long later on in the vlog. Uh, but effectively, it's gone from a fashion product to a surgical grade product. And the implications of that are huge. Anyway, uh, load up GT3. Then we're going to head to uh, a fine food establishment. <laughs> and, and then we're going to go and uh, check out new car, even a GR Yaris later on in the video. I need to uh, empty this boot. We've got some. These are all of our cleaning cloths here that we have to uh, take home and wash from all of the cars that come to the bunker to get filmed. We end up cleaning them off. This Christmas present, yes, Christmas present, I know we're in March, on order since uh, the middle of November last year, and it turned up this week due to the complications of Brexit and border controls and things like that, but check it out, it's so cool. Look at that. Yes, that is a cylinder from a classic Porsche that has been converted into Champagne cooler. <laughs> How cool is that? Also, things I've been carrying around with me are chargers. Now, these chargers are fairly commonplace, but not when they attach to a Koenigsegg. <laughs> that's what that's what your uh, triple trickle charger looks like for a Koenigsegg Regera. Filth in front of us. Look at this here. This is the problem in the UK in the winter. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you've got a detailing company. <laughs> Your car is never, ever clean. Uh, that brings me on to the topic of using this as a daily driver. The colour crayon, or chalk, depending on which side of Europe you're from, uh, actually deals with dirt aesthetically quite well. The other topic is, I do get a few comments when I say I use this as a daily driver. People are like, oh, you mean like every weekend? <laughs> I'm like, no, man, like every single day. Hence, we're on 31,384 miles now. I think that's a pretty strong effort. And honestly, if it wasn't for the whole COVID thing, which has resulted in minimal travel, absolutely no road trips at all, I really believe if I'd have used this as intended through 2020, this would definitely be on 40,000 now, for sure. McVlog. <laughs> <laughs> Get that McVlog on the go. Do you know, I'm not sure. I know it seems to be quite commonplace with the whole YouTube scene. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever filmed a whole McDonald's scene, as it were. Uh, I think this is the day that I become a certified YouTuber. Right, Hi, morning. Uh, can I get two, do you want a double sausage egg? <laughs> <You know laughs> two double sausage egg McMuffin meals, please. What don't you try, uh, Flat white? Flat white. Uh, two flat whites, please. Flat whites, yeah. Thanks, and two bottles of water as well, please. Cool. These are every. I mean, look, McDonald's is not exactly a new, a new thing, but I'm always blown away by the efficiency. Like they, they just know how to take your money <laughs> so, so quickly, don't they? Look at that. I'm gonna drive around here. Bang! Tap and collect, baby. So I recently just got a Peloton, and now I'm here at McDonald's. <laughs> Hold up. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, no, thank you. 
Yeah, and yet here I am. I think I've got that thing to offset the fact that I do this every now and again. Uh, it's just so good, isn't it? What is quite cool about this site, um, Mr. Heritage Dirt, we're on here. I forgot my bar. Oh. He knows. Morning, how are you? Very well, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, all good, man. Good to be back again. <laughs> Best gate dude in the world. Uh, so, always so pumped on life, that guy. Check this out. This has been, uh, I mean, this is absolutely wild. The last time we were here, we were talking about trying to fill these slots here with memorabilia. I don't know what it is about this place. It just has this magnetic ability of drawing F1 stuff inside. <laughs> so, so we've got um, Alex Albon's here. We've got Alex Albon's race suit. This is actual, actual race suit signed by him from last season and we've got his boots and we've got his gloves and that's cool but what I really like is the steering wheel so this is a wheel from Albon's uh, Red Bull racing car last year which is absolutely stunning just look at the detail on that it's an amazing thing I think what always shocks me is how light it is like it looks like such a substantial piece of equipment and then you pick it up and it's just featherweight um, I think the real ones of these, if it was like a, a working sc uh, screen, working unit with all of the tech inside, I heard somewhere that they were like 50 grand a steering wheel. I say that because what you'll notice every now and again is when a driver crashes and they're angry, they'll pull the steering wheel off the dashboard and they will just throw it out of the car as if it's like a rubber dinghy or something. Um, but in fact, they're like this most incredibly intricate and expensive bits of a kit. So I can only think what's going through the uh, minds of the team principal when they see their 50 grand steering wheel get thrown in the gravel. Nuts. Anyway. Yeah, so we've got 100 apprentices on our books. Yeah. Um, uh, Fantastic. Eight right? groups of mechanical, kind yes. of spanner, spanner wielding mechanical students, and yeah. uh, two groups of coach metal bashers in old terms. Sorry if I'm being a bit uh, yeah, a bit blase, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. All quite functional learning cars. Yeah. You know, good old Morris Minor here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what will hap often happen is that the um, apprentices will start the week and there'll be a fault or there'll be a situation or there might be a gearbox removal or various okay. things like that. So yes. they'll work through the four kind of key areas, transmission, body, electrics and, and, um, and chassis. Yeah. And, uh, and they'll say, right, the tutors will say, right, we've got that, this, that and the other. They'll set up various different scenarios, uh -huh. um, go through it, present it, learn from it and then by the end of the week put it all back together so they do block release so we were talking with Gary um, yeah. like Callum at uh, Curie Batoli yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. he'll come down here um, he'll stay in digs which awesome. is quite quite you know yeah, quite nice yeah. for them is is obviously promote that and give it give it the, the kind of aspiration yeah because I yeah, think quite yeah. often that, uh, the word apprentice sure can yes. be perceived wrongly Absolutely. Uh, I think it's really yeah, yeah. important to say look you know these are these are the company company bosses um, mm. in 20 years time and they'll be the people that actually will keep the vehicles on the road yeah, you know yeah. well exactly. if we can help we'd love to get you know we've got lots of young people that watch the yeah. channel yeah, yeah. and it would be great to give you guys some extra exposure and yeah. see who uh, comes out of the woodwork really yeah, 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 yeah. it would be brilliant yeah, yeah. Be great. yeah. great well, okay. look, appreciate you're busy you no must, no you must tell me to do it's it. alright yeah all, all day every day but it's uh, <laughs> thank you for no, the time thanks, thanks for your time I saw you oh, looking at that muffins cold oh did you know oh sorry So that was the 2019 rally, um, yeah. and it just so happened that they got these guards up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't have any perforations, so you couldn't really see much. No. Whereas with the ones which I've been wearing, I've always had that they're like completely yeah. perfect. I yeah. think the audience, when they see it, they assume that you can't see it, that it damages the your uh, peripheral vision. But actually, yeah. being like once you've got those holes in it quite close up, you can see through. Fine. So, uh, whereas those were, <laughs> were great. So, um, bit of backstory, guys. We've been working with this. This is just two of the team. Um, how many people would you say have been involved in this? I mean, Ooh. in total, like go for everyone involved in, so from draft design, your guys, factory side. That's tricky. Yeah, it has gone 
kind of worldwide really yeah. um so cool. i guess obviously it started with craig with all of your initial sketches and designs that's right um through to us into development to start sort of kicking off that process yeah so that's involved i think four of us in our team okay. and then also craig yeah and then it's gone over to hong kong to yeah. our technical designers who have um kind of ensured that the fit is all correct and got the spec of the product uh -huh. um, and then through to the production team and through to the factory yeah. um, and then back into our team again so it really has kind of gone okay. through all the channels. So, so one thing I'd like to help the audience with here is um, so I in my haste <laughs> announced this sunglasses thing I was like I'm gonna do this I've got some experience in like you know doing clothing and things like how long did it take right so I put out a post on Instagram, yeah. it was September 2019. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Now, as it happened, Craig uh, follows the channel, and you'd seen this post, and you reached out, right? Yeah. Um, also do a little bit of sketching, and also work for an eyewear company, uh -huh. sort of offering my skills over to you. Yeah. Well, when when Craig says he does a bit of sketching, <laughs> being incredibly humble. So, so these are some. Concept stage drawings of effectively what did we then did up at, right? Yeah, so purely like 10, 10 minutes okay. each. These are these all are hand, so cool. hand drawn. Look at these. They're so gorgeous. And I think what, what is amazing is, I mean, I'm not sure if, if you can tell by these, I'll probably splice them in actually on, on screen. Um, you nailed the, the aesthetic of it. So the how this started was every time I wore my, my crazy specs with these like side guards on, there was, there'd be countless people in the audience going, where did you get those from? And I was a little bit embarrassed to share them because, quite frankly, they are obnoxiously expensive. And I was like, this isn't going to look good. <laughs> I was like, oh, here they are. Um, and then over the years, every time they were on screen, where'd you get them from? Where'd you get them from? And we just thought, you know what, why don't we, why don't, do we explore this? So I put out that, that uh, you know, Instagram post in September thinking this would be a quick ordeal. We're February, no, March now, uh, 2021, and I think it's taken, since we properly started talking, uh, over 12 months, right? Yeah. yeah. Why, why is it that it takes so long? Because they're not going to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't just been, like, taking it easy. Right? Um, well, there's a lot of um, upfront design and development which goes into eyewear because technically it is classed as a medical device if mm -hmm. it is a, a glazed prescription pair of frames mm -hmm. um, and even if it's just a fashion sunglass it still has to um, meet certain PPE standards right. so actually there is a lot of development up front into making sure that the frame is kind of yes. suitable to most faces and it meets that technical specification that we need it to meet. Yeah. Actually, a lot of you were responsible for this taking so long because when I first teased this, the amount of people that asked if we could fit prescription lenses to the sunglasses, and being quite honest, it's not something I'd even remotely thought about, or did I understand that there was a different process involved in the design of the glasses to allow for that? Um, so when I got talking, I was like, man, this is going to take a while. And so if there's one thing I'd learned is, is don't just shoot off your idea before you've got <laughs> any form of concept. And that's why it, it took so long. But also going from a, a more fashion product to a surgical grade, so you can have prescription lenses in, takes a long time. So here we are. How do you start, Craig, when someone comes along and goes, I'm after something that looks like this. <laughs> like, um, um, also, well, I think I've got maybe over maybe 20 years experience doing eyewear now. Right. Um, both from the sports side to the ophthalmic side. There's so many different categories of eyewear. And one important thing is we all know human faces so well. That uh -huh. Eyewear is so personal. Yes. Um, so obviously watching James for quite a while, I thought I had a kind of idea of what he's sort of after. Um, but obviously, through discussions, uh, mainly on Zoom or the internet, we sort of locked down onto what the product wanted to be. So, nothing too sporty, nothing too crazy. It's all about engineering, balance, precision. I think James threw these sort of buzzwords yeah. out there. I think, do we end up sharing like pictures of like uh, titanium exhaust systems and coded egg components and all sorts <laughs> of things, right? In order to get this sort of ideas for details and themes. That's right. I mean, 
obviously we've got a lot of experience in eyewear, but as a designer, I like to see the whole world as design. Yeah. So you can just look at the corner of a room or something. That's obviously a lot of inspiration here. And you can just stream ideas forever. That's yeah. why I like to work really fast on paper to start with. Uh, what's unique, like anyone who might just be joining this randomly, who, who hasn't been familiar with this thing, uh, I was, I used to, well, for the last five years on the channel, I've worn this particular style of, of specs, which had these, I guess you would call them like eye diffusers, like sort of side guards on them, yeah. mm. um, and that just sort of caught on as a theme. Um, so what we decided to do is whatever um, pair of glasses we ended up having would always have this design language and, and aesthetic in it. So we've got a top tier pair here, which are titanium by the way, I can't believe we've got our own titanium glasses mate, that is ridiculous. So that's got that full theme happening there. Um, but then when you go to the entry levels, if you don't want to go quite as hardcore on the diffusers, the design language is still there, only it's sort of much more subtle and uh, blended in as part of the frame. The other thing which I think you guys nailed perfectly is I think the the idea that people see this aesthetic online and goes that looks really cool yeah. um, I think the reality for some people might be like it looks great but maybe I don't want to wear that day in day out so you've actually made this section something that you can take on and off mm -hmm. which I think is so cool so what we've effectively got here is two specs in one because you've got a totally different feel and I think that's awesome man I, I'm, I've not seen anyone else yet who has these side guards as a removable feature. Yeah, well, clips are traditionally a fairly vintage uh, idea for <clears throat> probably for ophthalmic glasses and sort of clipping on a, a sunshade. Yes. We've sort of flipped that on its head a little bit and uh, made the shields removable. And the glasses are just perfectly wearable without them. Yeah. Um, possibly even more so when they're glazed. I can't remember the last time I wore some specs without some shields yeah. on it. I feel like <laughs> vulnerable, you know, I can't... <laughs> One of the challenges that we've got today is we've got to lock in five styles of 11, which we have. Sounds easy. Um, these guys have absolutely knocked this out of the park. And a minute ago, we're all patting ourselves on the back going, how awesome. <laughs> how awesome are we? we have, every single style that they've done is bang on. So I think... Um, We'll share some shortly, but ultimately it's up to us to lock them in. But also, if you're watching this now, if you can keep an eye on my Instagram account over the next few days, we're going to throw these up and you can vote on them. So if you want any influence over what ends up uh, being available for our first range, uh, be sure to head over there. Uh, it would really help. It will really help genuinely determine which styles we end up locking in. And again, um, I'm never going to look at a pair of sunglasses the same way again. The amount of work involved in this stuff is unbelievable. Mm. And people as well, you know. Yeah. The amount of people involved, supply chains, etc. Yeah, it's definitely yes, a, a, a huge team effort here. We've got a lot of expertise yeah. globally here that's been put into this product. Everything from the initial concept sketches to where we are now. So it involves a lot of people and time dedication. Brilliant. All right, so that was awesome. Uh, that was really, really, really cool to finally see the samples. Tangible. Wear them on my face. So excited. Please, honestly, if you haven't, uh, get over to Instagram because I'm going to try and time it with this so that you can go and vote effectively. Uh, give us a direction as to where we should go with these specs. Uh, it's hard to choose five out of 11 that that team has done such an amazing job of creating some, some great glasses. But now, uh, we are off to pick up a GR Yaris. Not mine, it's actually Paynton's cameraman who you can't see right now. Picking his up from Race Logic. What have you had done there, dude? Yeah, so Oops, effectively, man, we've, yeah. um, we're going for a V Box setup in it. V Box? Yep. So I'll get, I guess you, you're planning on collecting some data for some exciting things. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the idea. That's the Instead idea. of bolting on big turbos and, you know, performance Hope parts, the which, yeah. you know, let's focus on the driver first and yeah. see what we can get out of it. Right, all right, so head in there, uh, then we're coming back and we got a call with none other than legendary uh, car designer Frank Stephenson, who we are working on a collaborative project with that I can't tell you about too much yet, but we might give you a sneaky uh, insight on 
the call in a minute. So uh, just as a small context, by the way, Frank designed the McLaren P1 um, and the Ferrari F430 and the Mini and the Fiat 500. And even the whale tail Escort Cosworth. So Frank is an interesting man indeed. So let's pick up the Yaris and go chat with Frank. Check this out. It all looks glamorous on the surface, but we're having pot noodle. Gary, when was the last time you had pot noodle? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I was at uni. Uni. <laughs> I was at uni. <laughs> Look at that. See Frank, don't we? Here he is, internet audio. Yeah. Hey. Good morning, James. It's like two o'clock, dude. <laughs> but yeah, morning. How's things? Wait a second, what day is it? <laughs> I know how you feel. How have you I been know, since we last spoke? Yeah, no, we're, we're keeping busy and uh, a lot of exciting stuff going on. So, um, Very cool. have a good time enjoying it, actually. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're turning out the stuff, huh? Yeah, no. we're all over the place at the minute, but uh, thankfully we could still keep working, with, which is good news. It's gone through a couple stages that were about three or four directions, um, but it came down to one exciting direction that is, I think, you probably like it. It's, it's kind of, if you don't like it on first viewing, then something's wrong with it. <laughs> okay. It needs to be, it needs to be leveled first. All right, and finally, here it is. The new addition to the garage, the channel, the fleet, however you want to interpret it. Um, completely out there, I know, but this is uh, our new support vehicle. The Ford Ranger Thunder, no less. We'll explain the Thunder bit shortly. Uh, just a bit of background story. Uh, the team is growing. The camera team is growing, support team, lots of other people in the background. Uh, not only do we need vehicles for team to get around, but we also need a reliable do-it-all support film truck vehicle. Uh, ultimately, we couldn't think of anything better when we painted the picture of what we needed than some sort of flatbed pickup truck type of thing. Uh, the Thunder's cool. It has augmented uh, the Ranger above its standard platform, two litre turbocharged engine. Now then, the reason this has also arrived is that the G-Wagon that we introduced on the channel last year has now sadly been sold. Now it was so much fun and we did it as a sort of temporary support vehicle. We scratched that itch, uh, that's gone. And it's actually, as a result of the value of that car, we've been able to introduce two cars to the channel. This one and another one, which is quite rightly going to take the place of the G-Wagon. I shan't give too much away right now, but if you've been following the channel over the last few months, I'm pretty sure you've got a good idea as to what that car will be. So this is one of those cars. It's still gonna fill the gap of the, the support vehicle. Uh, the point of this also is, and if you follow the Instagram account, uh, I mentioned towards the end of last year that we were looking to introduce not one, but two project cars to the channel. Well, the first one has been the GR Yaris, and the second one is this car right here. So this is not gonna stay like this at all, in fact. It is gonna go through quite a substantial, dramatic transformation. We're taking it uh, to a company which we'll share with you soon, uh, who, as far as I'm concerned, are probably the best in the game with regards to modifying these sorts of cars. And uh, it's gonna look completely different, but more importantly, menacing. And we're also gonna do something in the flatbed, that area over there, that's gonna make it quite specific to our needs which is filming cars. So once we're done with it, this should also as well double up as the ultimate tracking truck, which will be super cool. Uh, but as a brief overview, two liter, 215 brake horsepower. Um, amazingly, it has a 10 speed gearbox. I mean, I don't know what you'll do with all of those gears, but uh, to me, it just says, we've got to take this thing off road and find out what you can do with 10 gears. Uh, but I just wanted to introduce it now in its standard form. And what I like about that is, Right now, you as the audience can treat this as a blank canvas. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as to what you might want to see with our journey of a car that is completely different to what we would normally showcase on this channel. But it is uh, very much going to support everything we're doing ongoing. And when restrictions lift and we're allowed to get back on the road, this is the thing that's gonna carry all of our gear, get all of those external tracking shots when we're on supercar road trips, heading to the Nürburgring, etc. Small details in the back, there's actually a three pin socket in there. So if we need to charge camera gear on the road, we've got all of that as well. So generally this will be our trusty steed to uh, help support content 
going forward. And it as well will become content itself as we take you through the journey of turning this thing into an absolute tank. So look forward to sharing that with you soon. All 74 two cylinder horsepower, I'll have you know. What a machine. On a serious note, we're gonna to have to do some hypermiling in this suit. So the idea of this, anyone who's wondering what, what on earth this thing is, it's a Volkswagen XL1, real quick overview. They made 200 cars, technically 250, 50 were kept back by the Volkswagen group for like R&D and posterity and whatnot. Um, there was 200 available for sale to the public. This is one of the few UK um, issued cars really. This joined the channel uh, earlier last year and the idea was to go hyper miling in it because it's capable of over 300 miles per gallon. So we want to put a gallon in it and see how far we can go. Uh, right now COVID obviously doesn't allow for much of a road trip and I think this what this thing needs but uh, I just love it. In fact I'll put a link in the description below to give you the full overview of the engineering marvel that is the XL1. It's such a cool thing. Full carbon tub butterfly doors etc so uh yeah in the not too distant future we'd love to take this thing hyper miling and i think that's just where we shall sign off so uh, if you've liked the return to the vlogs i'd love to do more of them take you behind the scenes as to what we get up to between the car productions um oddly the the output of car productions is such a small percentage of like our our weeks and days uh, it, it seems a big deal because we try and schedule three a week and they're all polished and nice, etc. But what happens between those days? Endless stuff. This is just one of those days that we thought we'd take you along for the ride. So if you want to see more, let me know in, in the comments below. Uh, looking forward to introducing a couple more new cars to the channel quite soon. And uh, that's about it, really. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll just see you next time. Ciao!